Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, we had a all-future site against the odds poll. Looking forward to 2018. Happy New Year, everyone. By the way, we made it. It's 2018 now. And in the end, it was Spellweaver Volume coming out on top. So this week, we are heading to Modern to see if we can cast some crazy instants from our graveyard with the help of Spellweaver Volume. First, a quick warning before we get into it. I've been suffering from this crazy head cold for a few days, so if I sound a little weird in this video, or especially the gameplay videos that's what's going on with me sorry about that but hopefully i'll be feeling better soon anyway let's talk spellweaver volu in modern starting with the namesake card spellweaver volu itself so spellweaver volu is this crazy aura instead of enchanting a creature or a permanent or something like that it enchants an instant card in a graveyard then whenever we play a sorcery we get to cast the instant that it's enchanting for free and then we enchant another instant in a graveyard with spellweaver volume so the idea of our deck is we are going to enchant some really big powerful instants in our graveyard cast a sorcery and then hopefully use those instants to win the game. So what are we enchanting with Spellweaver Volu? The big one is Searing Winds. So Searing Winds is 10 damage to a creature player at instant speed for 9 mana. So you can probably see where we're going here. If we can get 2 Searing Winds in our graveyard, enchant one with Spellweaver Volu. If we cast 2 Sorceries, hopefully cheap Sorceries that don't take too much mana, we can just win the game. We 10 our opponent. Then we enchant the other Searing Winds. We 10 our opponent. 20 damage. Opponent's dead. So that's the main combo of our deck. Trying to get two Searing Winds in the graveyard, along with a Spellweaver Volu on a Searing Winds, and then cast two Sorceries. As a backup, we also have Lava Ball Trap. Lava Ball Trap is just kind of like an instant speed wildfire, essentially. Blows up two lands, four damage to each creature. So a way we can sweep the board and get rid of a couple lands. It doesn't help us kill our opponent. That's why it's a one of, and Searing Winds is a four of but it is a way we can just kind of sweep away the board if need be and get rid of a couple tron lands or something like that also if our opponent cracks a fetch land they have two lands entering the battlefield which activates the trap cost so at five mana it's not impossible that we might hard cast lava ball trap once in a while but the main plan two searing winds in the graveyard spellweaver volu double searing winds win the game so how do we get cards in the graveyard and here things are kind of interesting so first off we have faithless looting and cathartic reunion pretty simple let's just draw cards discard cards or discard cards draw cards which means if we have searing winds in our hand if we have lava ball traps in our hand we can get them into our graveyard from our hand the other thing about faithless looting that is really key and specific is it's a sorcery that works from our graveyard so on turn one we can faithless looting then down the road on turn six let's say after we cast a spellweaver volu we just flashback faithless looting it's going to trigger our spellweaver volu let us 10 our opponent's face with our searing winds hopefully so it's kind of doing double duty there and that's kind of one of the tricks of the deck is we need to have cards that can not only get cards in our graveyard let's say but also support our spellweaver volu plan by giving us sorceries to cast because there's only so many slots to go around in our deck so faithless looting cathartic reunion hands from our card into our graveyard hopefully zero wins for spellweaver volu we also have a couple of dredge cards which are really good at just filling our graveyard quickly with cards so remember we only have four searing wins in our deck for us to combo off and win the game we have to get two of those searing wins in the graveyard which means we got to get a lot of our library into our graveyard to have the odds being in favor of us having two Searing Winds. So Life from the Loam, Stinkweed Imp, just let us trade in card draw for milling, essentially. We can dredge three with Life from the Loam. We can dredge five with Stinkweed Imp. And it works well with our Cathartic Reunions, with our Faithless Lootings for even more dredging. So hopefully by the time we're ready to cast our Spellweaver Volu on turn five, we're going to be able to have double Searing Wind in the graveyard. Life from the Loam, in specific, probably looks weird. We're not really using it to kill our opponent directly. It's nice that it helps us hit our land drops up to five for Spellweaver Volu, but the trick of Life from the Loam is it's another sorcery that essentially we can cast from our graveyard. Once we get our Spellweaver Volu down, we just dredge Life from the Loam back to our hand, cast it, it's a sorcery, triggers Volu, lets us deal damage to our opponent. So kind of like Faithless Looting, it's another card that does two things for our deck, lets us fill our graveyard, also gives us a sorcery that's cheap and we can cast from our graveyard. Speaking of cheap sorceries to cast from the graveyard, we have a one of Flame Jab as well. So Flame Jab just one mana 
retrace. So we can cast it from our graveyard if we discard a land. We can get lands in our hand from our life from the loam. So we should be able to do it. And then we can just cast it twice to trigger our Spellweaver Volute, 20 our opponent with our Searing Wind. Also can be good in some matchups against like Affinity that has a lot of small creatures, Young Pyromancers, Delver of Secrets, a way to repeatedly kill little creatures. So it's not bad. It would be nice if it was instant speed, although then it wouldn't work with Spellweaver Volute. But it's mostly in the deck as another card we can just dredge into our graveyard, use it to trigger our Spellweaver Volute for just one mana. Torrential Gear Hulk is basically a backup version of Spellweaver Volu. So one of the risks of the deck is we're really built around Spellweaver Volu. And while having Cathartic Reunions, Faithful Soonings, all that stuff helps us make sure we can draw into a Volu, having four means there still will be some games where we just don't draw one. Torrential Gear Hulk is just another way that we can cast a Searing Wind, cast a Lava Ball Trap for six mana, essentially, once we mill it into our graveyard. So as we're discarding our Searing Winds and our Lava Ball Traps, while getting a Spellweaver Volute down is plan A, plan B is we can just draw into a Torrential, flash in Torrential, Siri wins our opponent's phase, hopefully win the game that way. So it's nice to have additional copies, essentially, of Spellweaver Volute in Torrential Gearhulk. Then we have our interaction. So the challenge with this deck is... It actually takes a lot of slots to support Spellweaver Volute. We need the Volutes itself. We need Torrential as a backup Volute. We need to have all the ways to get cards in our graveyard. We need cheap sorceries to trigger Volute. We need finishers to actually kill our opponent with Volute, which means we don't really have a lot of slots to play good interactive spells. Thought Seizes and Fatal Pushes and Counter Spells and all that stuff. So when you run into a situation where you have very limited slots for interaction, you want that interaction to be as high impact as possible. So for that, we have Ensnaring Bridge, Blood Moon. Basically, since we can't play a ton of ways to keep our opponent from killing us, we got to play a couple of ways which can possibly just keep our opponent from killing us all by themselves. Blood Moon in the right matchup is just like, you can't play magic for a while while we are setting up our Spellweaver Volu. Ensnaring Bridge in creature matchups is just like, you can't kill us with your Merfolk for a while while we're setting up this kill with Spellweaver Volu. So hopefully, having Blood Moons and Ensnaring Bridges will let us stay alive because Volu is a little bit slow. We're looking at winning turn six at the earliest, and that's assuming everything goes well. We don't get hit by graveyard hate. Nothing horrible happens. So we're looking at winning turn six at the minimum. That is the fastest we can win with this deck, and that's not even going to be super consistent because we need a lot of things to go right for the turn six kill. So we're pretty slow by modern standards, which means having some ways to slow down the game is actually really important. Mana base wise, got some fetch lands to search up some shock lands. Also, a a few basic lands. Spire Bluff Canal gives us a painless way to cast our Faithless Lootings on turn one, Cathartic Reunions on turn two. As far as the sideboard, we get a bunch more removal options. Valdaction Shackles is nice because we can get it down and it doesn't sit in our hand for Ensnaring Bridge, so it's a removal spell that kind of sits on the battlefield. We got a decent amount of islands in the deck to support our Blood Moon plan. A Braid lets us kill creatures, kill artifacts, engineered explosives, kind of a Wrath that sits on the battlefield, working well again with Ensnaring Bridge. Anger of the Gods a way to sweep away a bunch of creatures in the same matchup. Relic of Progenitus for Graveyards, Dragon's Claw to gain a bit of life against Bird, and then just a couple of negates. Try to stay away from too many counters because of the Ensnaring Bridge plan. Uh, it's hard to have a lot of counters in a bridge deck, because counters sit in your hand. Bridge doesn't want cards to sit in your hand, but a couple in combo matchups where bridges aren't good anyway. Against Ad Nauseam, against Storm, you don't really care about Ensnaring Bridge, so you can bring in the gates in the matchups where Ensnaring Bridge is bad anyway, and in those matchups, negate is really, really good. So that is Spellweaver Volute for Modern, and that's our against odds deck for this week. So how is this going to work? I'm really skeptical. There are a lot of problems with the Spellweaver Volute plan. I feel like we got the pieces. That's the good news. We have the pieces to make it work. We have everything you need. We have the Volutes. We got the backup Volute and Gearhulk. We have the finisher. Searing Wind is the best finisher. There is not very many instants that just finish the game and are big and expensive and worth Voluting. So Searing Wind's great finisher. We have the ways to fill our graveyard. We have the ways to trigger our Volute. So we got all the pieces. The thing I'm worried about is twofold. First off, we're slow. Like we were talking about, turn six is probably 
probably the quickest we can possibly kill someone. And even that is not a guaranteed by any means turn six kill. We're kind of like, hopefully, maybe if everything goes well, we can kill you on turn six, which is not especially fast in a world of turn three trons and turn three storm kills and affinity having cranial platings and all this stuff. So we're a bit slow. So we're leaning really hard on just a few pieces of interaction, which is matchup dependent and blood moves and snaring bridge. So we'll see if that can work. The other challenge is we get really wrecked by graveyard hate. If you look at our deck, if our opponent has graveyard hate, our plan is basically to either beat down with Torrential Gear Hulk, which is roughly the size of a Tarmogoyf, I guess, but it costs six mana if you're not flashing stuff back, or get up enough mana that we're actually hard casting Searing Winds, which doesn't seem like the most practical plan in a fast modern format. So that's the other thing I'm concerned about. Almost all decks are playing graveyard hate. Some decks are even playing graveyard hate in the main deck because there's so many graveyard decks in the format. And we definitely pick up on a lot of fringe graveyard hate with this deck. So we're a bit slow. We pick up on a lot of graveyard hate. Good news is if we keep trying sooner or later, hopefully we get the super crazy double searing win skill. So we'll see how many matches it takes, but I'm hopeful that sooner or later it'll happen. And once it does, it'll be worth all the pain and suffering that goes into it. So anyway, that's our against the odds deck for this week. Spellweaver Volute for Modern. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, take a second and click that like button down below. It's a great way to help support the channel for free, and you can find the next video in the playlist right here.